the evolution and development of big band jazz is a course that will teach you about music in general, using jazz as the key illustration. The idea is, of course, that you don't really think about this, but somebody had to think about what are we going to play? How are we going to interpret it? What musicians will be used? How many of them are there going to be? How many of the same instruments might we use? Will we have individual instruments that are nevertheless related to a family of instruments? See, these are the ideas about music. What is the band going to do? Now, in jazz, we have a very distinct development of an orchestral approach. In fact, it, it helped put the individual in the spotlight. You have a band, so there are 10, 20 people, five people standing around, and one guy's going to tell you what his heart's thinking with his craft on his instrument. Well, what are the others supposed to do? Well, an orchestral approach creates a context for them not to get in the way but to keep on playing. And this is really the principle of the ensemble in jazz, at least from a, a big band approach. And jazz really was most popular when it used a large orchestra. Now, why is it all trumpets? Well, it's not all trumpets, but why are there trumpets instead of trumpet or no trumpets? Why trombone or trombones? How many saxophones? Why aren't there a lot of oboes or numerous harps? Where is this vast percussion section? Why is it just one person playing 10 drums instead of 10 people playing 10 drums? How is the jazz orchestral system different from that of other musics? So I've designed this course that will make you an expert about it and explain it to you easily. And we'll do it in six lessons. And, uh, you know, anybody can take this course, and I know that because I had an 11-year-old a few years ago take the course, and I bet you he knows as much now as he did then, and he knew a lot when he came to me and we got more. And that's the whole idea, get more in your listening enjoyment. But I also know it's a good course because eight years ago, you know who took it? Wynton Marsalis. He wanted to find out about this guy, Don Redman, and there were quite a bit on Don Redman in it. So I taught him about Don Redman. And this doesn't make me a better person, but I actually met Don Redman. There aren't too many people who can do that, say they met Don Redman, at least being telling the truth. I was walking down Broadway. It's funny, because it was in front of Lincoln Center, which was under construction. And Willie the Lion Smith was talking. And I know some of you may think that I talk a lot. But when Willie the Lion Smith talked, you were silent. Didn't matter if you were walking 50 blocks, 100 blocks, three blocks. He was the first, last, and all the in-between words. And I was listening. And I wasn't me yet. I was probably about 13, maybe 12. And he said, hey, look, there's Don Redman. Don Redman wants you to meet this kid here. Kid, this is Mr. Don Redman. It's nice to meet you, Mr. Don Redman. You like music, kid? Yeah. That's it. But my other teachers in the evolution of big band jazz are the primaries alongside of Don Redman. I learned from Bill Chalice, Eddie Durham, Gil Evans. He was very kind to tolerate me. I mean, he had this, you know, they got me sitting here at a piano. Thank heavens I'm not playing it. But Gil Evans used to say, hey, man, sit down next to the piano. Let's, let's talk about Bill Chalice. Let's talk about Tom Satterfield. Let's talk about Don Redman. And then he would show me things. He was very kind because he knew everything. I knew nothing. And even if I was paying attention, I could never be Gil Evans. That was one of the most important lessons. But texture. He explained the whole deal about texture because the band he wrote for, the Claude Thornhill Orchestra, there's an orchestral approach we'll cover in the course. Five trumpets, four trombones. Four French horns, French horns, jazz band, not common. Two tubas, not one, not in the rhythm section. And the reed players, they doubled flutes and tripled piccolo and played bass clarinets. And Gil Evans, he bought into that Claude Thornhill sound, and you may know that he applied it to Miles Davis's most famous orchestral records. Well, Gil Evans taught me about it. He taught me about Claude Thornhill. 
and that's cool. The evolution and development of big band jazz. It's cool, it's about today. It's about the first days of orchestral jazz, even the prequel, and about these great people who taught me, and now I'm gonna to try to teach you.